Good morning and welcome to worship. And we so pleased this morning to have the youth band with us leading um, us in worship. And we are looking forward to your ministry this morning. Uh, last evening, I understand that you had a very good evening with the youth band and the retiring collection raised £220.15 and that will go towards the youth work within our division. Uh, within our morning meeting this morning, we will be holding our harvest altar service and our midweek activities are as follows. Monday will be the cafe at 9.30 and then followed by the cameo club at 1.30. Wednesday um, sees our fireflies start again at 3.30. And this is a youth ministry for children age 5 to 11. So if you know any children at all age 5 to 11, Wednesday is for them. So grandchildren, great-grandchildren, neighbours, anyone you know, please encourage them to come along and I'm sure they'll have a great time at the army. Uh, Thursday is our parent and toddler group and that's at 9 30 and then coffee morning on friday at 10 o'clock uh, just for up and coming events our band weekend will be on october the 12th and the 13th and we have the visit of a gisborough band and the flowers on the altar table this morning are in birthday memories of ma'am joyce medcalf from gordon kathleen and the family and we thank you for those memories Ron Willis continues to experience major health issues and has been in hospital again uh, this week after briefly returning home. He will be in hospital at least over the weekend and he is on ward F61 um, if anyone would like to visit or drop a card. And please continue to pray for all members of our fellowship who suffer from ill health or in need at this time and also for the families and friends who support them. Uh, Dean um, is not here this morning, but we really want to congratulate Dean, so you've got to keep this in your head for when he comes back, because he's recently completed his master's degree in creative writing. And Dean has written some children's books as part of the degree course, and these have been published. So that's a great achievement for Dean. I think he's been at the last night of the proms last night, so he's obviously having a great time at the moment, isn't he? So, um, so please uh, remember to congratulate Dean, because it's a great achievement when you see him. And I can hand over to the youth band. Thank you. <laughs>
Good morning. It's great to see you all here uh, this morning. Um, that was a piece of music. I'm sure you re re recognize the, the tune, hopefully. Uh, it was uh, How Great Thou Art, and that for us has just set the tone for what we want to do uh, this, eve uh, this morning, even. Uh, I still think it's last night. Uh, where we just want to continue to praise the Lord and recognize how great he is. Um, we're going to start our Harvest Sunday morning meeting. We've got a few uh, of the Harvest classics for you. I hope you don't mind that. Um, it is Harvest, after all. And the first song we've got is uh, All Creatures of Our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing Alleluia, Alleluia. There's five verses, so we'll stand and we'll get started. Thank you. Thank you for that good sing. Uh, we're now going to sing um, that lovely song, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Uh, very apt for a harvest. It featured in one of our, uh, our last march that we played yesterday, um, this song. 
Um, give thanks with a grateful heart. Uh, so we'll sing this song twice through, please, if that's okay. Thank you, Brian. For you now in this time of prayer we want to thank you and we want to express our gratitude to you in prayer may it be a pleasing joyful sound to you thank you lord for your love it brings us acceptance and significance thank you lord for your truth it brings us guidance and direction thank you lord for your mercy it brings us help and comfort thank you lord for your faithfulness it brings us stability and strength Thank you, Lord, for your beauty displayed in the earth. It brings us joy and delight. Thank you, Lord, for your way of redemption, the cross. It brings us salvation and regeneration. Thank you, Lord, for all of the wonderful gifts you give to us each day. Help us to use them wisely in a way that will show your example in all that we do. We ask these things in and through your name. Amen. Oh, 
Thank you very much, Songsters, for your ministry this morning. Um, for those of you that have ever received an email, a letter, or anything from me, um, you will realise that I'm not the best at grammar or spelling. So, I need some help this morning um, from some young people. And I apologise now, teachers amongst you and people that like straight lines, you haven't got it. Um, because I'm not very good at drawing straight lines either. So, I'm just going to pick people because I'm not going to ask. So, we'll have Alex. Samuel, you should learn not to shake your head. In, any, in, any, in anything that happens, always just go. So, we'll have Alex, Samuel, we'll have Jack, we'll have Ben. We'll have Matthew, we'll have Oliver. How many is that? I can't even count either. How many is that? Five so far. I need another two. We'll have James. This is a great privilege for those of you that know James. It's a really good privilege to get James up the front doing something. Oh, we'll have Josh as well because Alex nominated him. Right, there you go. You're a H. Yeah, As you can see, so hold your letters up. What does it say? Can you read it? Harvest. Oh, that's a good start. At least you can read what I've written. Um, for those of you that have, have you ever seen Monsters University as well? Have you ever watched the programme, the film Monsters University? Have any of you seen it behind? Yeah. Do you not think this looks like one of the characters with the big legs? So there's a character in Monsters, and I was looking at this as I was doing it this morning, and there's a character with really long legs and a big arm like that, so apologies for my drawing. I'm going to read a, a poem to you. And gentlemen, don't ignore that. You've got the poem, so you can cheat. <laughs> gentlemen, you've got to, when I say certain words, you've got to try and spell them. So you can either move or you can bob down and just have the ones that are there. Does that make sense? Yes? Does that make sense to you out there? Okay, right. Don't let me down, please, gentlemen. All right. Okay, so... This is a harvest poem. We have, we have so much food here. We are fortunate to be blessed with the best of this world. But just for a moment, let's take time to think of all the rest of the world. Are they spelling it right, by the way? They're what? They're backwards. Right. Apparently you're doing it backwards. Rest. You were doing it backwards. Right. Okay. No, ignore, ignore that bit. This is a bit here. So the ones that have got... With food, there is plentiful and vast in range. Vast in range. Our harvest still isn't complete. Without taking time to say thank you to God for giving us all that we eat. Can you see how motivated they are and how fast they are at getting there? If I said there were sweets at the end, would you, be more, would you be faster? No, don't eat sweets, okay. Let's thank God for heat from the sun up here. Heat. For the rain that God sends us for free, for vegetables, fruit, and for all things that grow on the land and that swim in the sea. Out of the way. How do you spell sea? These are highly intelligent young gentlemen. Don't mock them, please. <laughs> we have so much food here while people starve. Oh, while some people starve. So let's always try to behave with gratitude, kindness, not hiding away from people we should try to save. <laughs> oh. 
Harvest the time to show that we care, to bring gifts of food to the table, to share. This thankgiving moment just cannot be missed to thank God for bringing this lovely harvest. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Happy harvest. Just a little bit of light humour for you this Sunday morning as we celebrate harvest. Thank you. You can sit down now, boys. Thank you very much, Jason. And thank you, guys, for restoring our confidence in the uh, education system of our country <laughs> that you can all spell. We're going to sing All Things Bright and Beautiful, but we're going to multitask. Uh, for those who belong to the core here in Monk Weymouth, we're, it's our altar service, so if you've got your envelopes, we invite you to bring your envelopes forward as we sing All Things Bright and Beautiful. And we're going to sing the song all the way through, and uh, Nathan's going to wag his stick and look important, because that's what Nathan does. So I invite you to stand. We'll take the lead from the band, and then uh, as we sing, I invite you to come forward to your altar service.
that we have an education system, we have employment. Lord, we have so much. And as we give you back our harvest offering, we pray that this money will be blessed and used here in this place. That the 25% will be used across the division to forward your mission to your local Salvation Army. Father God, thank you for the riches, the bounty that we have. So Father God, bless this offering. Bless the givers. This we ask in your dear son's name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you to the band for that. I think we're going to give them a rest with this song. Uh, Brian's going to help us on the piano. We're going to sing the Days of Elijah. So please stand, and when, uh, whenever Brian's ready, we'll take it away. Thank you. This isn't Nathan, this is Josh. Uh, yes, we are technically related. Well, not technically, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, and I've been voluntold I'm doing a testimony today. Um, so, here we go. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm absolutely exhausted at the moment. It has been a great weekend, um, but life has been very busy the past couple of months. I've left a job selling shoes, it's thrilling. Um, I've had two music schools back to back, uh, very exhausting, but very rewarding. And I have had a week to prepare myself to move to a completely new area of the country, away from all my family and friends. Not too dissimilar to university students at the moment, who I'm sure we're all thinking of. Uh, as part of my degree, I've taken a placement here, and I work in the Human Resources Department at Bentley in Cheshire. Uh, my role in the company is a labour relations, so dealing with the connection of anything related to the workforce, predominantly contractors on site, which covers about 4,000 people. Uh, things in my job role include a rewrite of the employee handbook, short be looking at pay negotiations, uh, trade union work, admin, questions, that sort of thing. Uh, so the flexibility of the job's great. Um, as I was writing this, I was 300 miles away from the office on the working day, whilst working. Um, but at the end of the day, being a member of the Salvation Army and being here was always my priority. Uh, from being taken as a child to every week and weekend across the UK for... 20 years of my life, uh, near and far. Uh, but one thing has always been the same, and that's always been music. It is definitely the rock that keeps me going day to day, whether I'm commuting, walking to work, driving, uni, band music, or a form of religious expression is typically playing half the time. Uh, it's clear what the power of music means to the people that play it, no matter their own religious background. I have memory, many memories playing uh, music, and remembering the words of pieces I've played in particular. Um, I wouldn't say I'm bold in professing or talking about my own faith, but I find the easiest way to express my own faith is through music. Uh, at this year's Territory Music School, uh, the band I presented the piece of music, Metamorphosis, on the Wednesday. As many bandos or enjoyers of band know, there's often a buzz when you put your instrument down at the end of a big piece or a larger work, uh, but it's not necessarily the quality of playing, but how a message is portrayed to the listener and hopefully take them on their own journey. Uh, the following week, at our own divisional school, the band played a piece called Faith Walk by William Himes. 
Um, there's a lovely tune halfway through, and it's a simple arrangement of I'm in his hands. It's safe to say I play that for myself as a Christian with uncertainty in my own life. Um, but the words say, I'm in his hands, I'm in his hands. Whatever the future holds, I'm in his hands. Whatever the days I cannot see have all been planned for me. His way is best. You see, I'm in his hands. As I've embarked on my new journey, I know that I'm in his hands. The love and support I've been given at the call folk, both at Millfield and at Sale, as well as my new job, has held me together. And hopefully, as the feeling of the Wednesday night at Territorial Music School, I'll be able to profess. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day, as you're teaching me your way, that you do just what you say in your time. Thank you. So I'd like to thank Joshua for sharing that and for those encouraging words to us all. Uh, really kind. Um, Caitlin is now going to bring to us a, a vocal solo. Um, what, sorry, what is it you're singing, Caitlin? It's called The Gift. I don't think it would be amiss if we gave Caitlin some encouragement this morning as she comes forward. Thank you.
When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I wonder if you have a favorite season. Is it spring when the days grow longer and the nights shorter? Maybe summer when the weather is hopefully warmer and we spend more time outside. Or perhaps autumn with its changing colors. Then there's winter with the possibility of waking up to a crisp white blanket of snow after an overnight flurry. As a child, I have to admit that autumn didn't really stand out too much to me. Aside from the changing leaves and playing conkers in the yard, I never, play, I never paid it too much attention. Summer was my favorite. Longer days and chance to play out for more hours with your mates. But now as an adult, I think my perspective has shifted. And while I enjoy all the seasons and each brings something new, I think autumn has started to feel that little bit more special. This change in mindset probably happened around five or six years ago during a trip to America. And visiting at this time, I noticed something a bit different. Shops weren't yet filled with the Christmas items that they often are here in the UK. Instead, they were full of autumn decorations, or as they call it, fall. I've never seen anything like this before. There were acorn ornaments, hedgehog doorsteps at doorstops, autumn leafed themed draft excluders, leaf garlands, pumpkin decorations and door wreaths. A few years later, and we've started to see these kind of decorations in our UK shops too. However, in the US, these decorations mostly are tied to a particular date. This year, November the 28th. And what day is that? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the national holiday in the US and Canada, where they celebrate the harvest and give thanks for the blessings of the past year. It's generally believed that Thanksgiving tradition is based on a 1621 harvest feast shared by English colonists known as the Pilgrims, originally from Plymouth. It's often the busiest time of year with family members coming together from all over the country. Some even say it's celebrated as much, if not more, than Christmas. It's similar to our harvest festivals in the UK, but on a much, much larger scale. Of course, like many things, Thanksgiving has become quite commercialized, with shops seeing it as a chance to cash in. But I don't mind that too much, because it means I have a chance to pick up some nice decorations. So, going back about five or six years, we were in a homeware store, browsing these autumn decorations and we spotted these small, three small white pumpkins. And they immediately caught our attention because across the middle, they were inscribed with the words, grateful, thankful, blessed. I wonder what kind of a harvest you are having and what type of a harvest you're thankful for today. What are you grateful for? What blessings have you received? As I prepared this image, I had quite a few different ideas um, that I could have shared with you. And in fact, at times, it was quite overwhelming trying to choose one theme around the idea of harvest. But there was one passage that I couldn't shake from my mind. And it's this one from Matthew 9, 37. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Or another translation puts it like this. The harvest is ready, but the workers are few. It reminded me of a national headline from just two years ago on May the 25th, 2022. UK labour shortage. It used to be easy to get fruit pickers. The BBC article highlighted how uh, one fruit farm in Suffolk was already struggling with ripe strawberries ready to be picked, yet not enough workers to harvest them. The farmer explained his concern. He said, the biggest worry is balancing supply and demand. But to even get to that point, you need enough pickers. We used to have a system where if a worker from the EU left, they'd bring a friend or a relative to take their place. That's no longer possible. And it's causing the problems that we see today. 
He added, it used to be easy to find pickers, but now it's not. This shortage of seasonal labour has been a challenge in British agriculture for centuries. Farmers often needed workers from afar, going back as far as the 14th century when they relied on labourers from Ireland. And while British workers continue to do seasonal work until the late 20th century, their willingness to engage in such hard labour has dramatically decreased. Does this remind you of the Bible passage we've just heard? Matthew 9, 35 to 37, just expanding our reading slightly from the New King James Version says, Then Jesus went about all of the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The question I found myself um, asking to myself as I read this passage was, how did Jesus see it? What was the tone of his voice? How did his heart feel when he spoke these words? I imagine Jesus saying, the harvest is plentiful with a sense of excitement, with anticipation in his voice. He's filled with hope because he sees so many people who are ready to come to him. So many who could fill our churches, our community halls. So many who could build a personal relationship with him. If we take a moment to look around in our schools, our colleges, our universities, our workplaces, our places of leisure, what do we see? The harvest is plentiful. But as Jesus says, to, says this to us now, his next words might feel more serious, more like a challenge, but the laborers are few. Is there a hint of disappointment in his voice? Does he see the struggle ahead, knowing that with so few workers, some of the harvest may be left untouched? Like the story of the UK labor shortage a couple of years ago, could it mean that some of the harvest, people who are ready to receive him, might be left behind, unpicked, unused, left to wither. Does Jesus say this to me as a personal challenge? Come and join my labourers, David. You have so much to offer. David, look out of your window. See all them people? That's my harvest. It's plentiful. Fill up my church. David, I need your help. The harvest is ready, but so many of the workers I call keep making excuses. Will you make excuses? In these words, I hear both an invitation and a challenge. Jesus is excited about the harvest, but he's calling for more hands to join the work. He's calling us personally to step up. Grateful, thankful, blessed. The harvest is ready. I'm grateful to, to Brian and Caitlin for the solo this morning. And I, uh, I heard them rehearsing yesterday afternoon and I, it was absolutely perfect for the message this morning. And I didn't know that that's what Caitlin was going to sing to us. I have not much to give thee, Lord, for that great love which made thee mine. I have not much to give thee, Lord, but all I have is thine. Don't have a lot, Lord. Not much to exchange for everything you've given me, but all I have is yours. All. You might hear some say it's a bit of a dangerous song. Forgive me for paraphrasing the verses, but for me it took two or three times of reading that song before I really got it. And this will be our prayer before we finish this time, before the band brings us the peace church break. So let us pray. Lord, is it right that you require something from me? Then speak. Whatever it is, it's yours. I'll obey. Do you ask for my talents? All of them I give you, so others will be blessed. Do you ask of my time that passes so quickly? I give you it, not grudgingly, but freely, because by right it's yours. Do you ask for a loving, faithful heart? 
It's yours. Because on Calvary, you give everything for me. I have not much to give thee, Lord, for that great love which made thee mine. I have not much to give thee, Lord, but all I have is thine. Amen. <laughs> Um, we're coming to the end of our, our meeting this morning. I just I've got a few uh, words of thanks just to give. Um, first of all, uh, to our own officers for uh, your hospitality with the band, particularly yesterday. We were very well fed, and uh, the donuts were particularly well appreciated. So thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, thank you to our songsters for supporting this morning, as ever. 
Um, thank you to Audrey at the back for doing the words to our songs, They're very much appreciated. Um, and to Colin as well for his help as ever. Uh, to the band, uh, thank you for all your hard work, for our soloists, for that extra effort that you put in, thank you very much. Um, to Brian for his work on the piano, uh, doesn't go unappreciated. Uh, to all of our helpers that we have in the band, um, it's really, really uh, good that you're playing with us and we really appreciate uh, you giving the time to play. Um, and to my team with the band, uh, Andrew, David, for opening the work to us this morning, thank you. Uh, to Jason and to, to Ruth, who's not here. And thank you to yourselves for coming and for supporting uh, this weekend. Thank you to those who've come from other core. Um, if you've had to delegate responsibilities that you might have had just to be here, uh, thank you for, for kind of arranging all of that. And as I say, it's great to, to have you with us. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, what the band have uh, contributed to uh, our harvest weekend, and I hope you feel in the harvest spirit. We're going to finish by singing another great harvest song. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. And um, that will be, we'll do the first verse and the last verse of this one. So if you'd like to stand and we'll sing this song, uh, the first and the last verse. Thank you. <laughs> of me not to say thank you to Nathan and his team. Nathan stole my thunder in thanking everybody for their participation, but thank you guys. And also pass on our thanks to your home cause who have got holes in the worship this morning because you guys are here. Thank you for what you're doing and thank you for making us feel really old because I'm looking around and when I look at Robin, I got Robin mistaken this morning because I thought it was a sister. And I'm thinking, well, I was at college with Robin's parents. And I'm going, I remember her running around. Then I met her husband. And I'm thinking, yeah, I feel really old. But uh, it's great. It is great to hear you guys. Thank you, David, for your word this morning. Really challenging words. Thank you to the soloists today and yesterday. But thank you guys for being who you are, being salvationists in a difficult and challenging word and standing up for what you believe in. And whether that's through music, whether that's giving your testimony, wh however that is, thank you for what you do. If you'd like to show your appreciation before I pronounce a word of benediction, I think you've got a boosie bonus? One more. Let's give our appreciation usual way.
just ask God's blessing and then afterwards we can enjoy some tea, coffee and juice together. Father God, we thank you for this amazing group of young people on our platform today who have shared a bountiful harvest with us in music. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for their journey of faith so far. We thank you for what you've got in store for them in the future. And Father God, I just pray for them. I pray for their respective cause. I pray for this, this amazing church called the Salvation Army here in the northeast of England, in the best part of your world that we live in. Lord, I pray for your richest blessing. I pray for guidance for the leaders. I pray for, I pray for that the workers will stand up and be counted because the harvest is ripe and plentiful. So, Father God, I just thank you and I pray your richest blessing on them, upon us, upon this, your church. I pray this in the powerful name of your dear son, Jesus, in the powerful Holy Spirit. So, Father God, bless us, use us, this we ask in your dear son's name, and we unite as a family to say, Amen and Amen. Amen.